then with 240 grit wet and dry paper we have to thoroughly clean the surface working all in one direction no back and forward strokes working off the end and then reversing so that's 240 grit wet and dry paper and household vinegar the vinegar has two functions it helps to clean the surface because it removes any grease and also the film that's applied to this uh, any kind of alkali is death to it and so an acid rinse of some sort that counteracts the possibility of that happening so now we're going to rinse it in warm water and dry it it looks clean at this stage but there's still some dirt on there and that has to be scrubbed off with a bit of punched up paper towel and if you look at the paper towel you'll see that it's got some black residue on there so this is just more of the same until we get to the, the next stage which will be putting the photosensitive film in place this is the material that we will be using for photo etching it's actually a film made up of three layers and as you can see it has a top layer of thin polythene which is being pulled away at the moment and that leaves behind a tacky layer of photosensitive material it's slightly tacky rather like very weak sellotape that can come right off now I think and the, the top film is just protective film so that can be discarded. We've been looking at this material in fluorescent light which of course contains an element of ultraviolet light and that is the, the wavelength which actually exposes the film. So that piece of film is scrapped now. We're now from now on we're going to be working in yellow light uh, to which this film isn't sensitive. So now we're working in yellow light and here's the actual piece of film that's going to be laid onto the piece of brass, remove the protective film and we can discard that and now we've exposed the underside of the film which is like very weak sellotape it will adhere but not as sticky in the way that sellotape would adhere make sure that the whole thing is covered one thing to mention is the temperature of the plate if the plate is too warm then you may get problems with it sticking ahead of you. If it's too cold it won't stick at all. So if it's too warm it, a good uh, trick is to put a sheet of paper in between and just pull the sheet of paper away as you progress. You'll see that working in a curve you get a sort of bow wave effect. Yes, you can see it nicely there, a bow wave, and you have to maintain that bow wave as you progress across. If you did this with your fingertips, you'll find that they stick to the surface of the plastic and stretch it, so you get all sorts of problems with wrinkles and so on. This is working very nicely. Don't hurry, just nicely. If you hurry, you'll get blisters. If there are any blisters, the simple trick is just to burst them with a sharp needle and the air will escape and then you can rub it down and the hole that the needle leaves is so small that it hardly matters nearly there perfect and now that it's stuck down we have to trim off the surplus using a scalpel The film, as we say, isn't firmly adhering to the brass surface. Uh, it needs to be heated. And we do that using an ordinary domestic iron. Uh, but before we uh, actually iron the film, we have to dry the moisture out of the sheet of paper that's going to be used as a protective coating. 
So we just iron the thing. And so now we can just put the plate face up on the ironing board. This is a very uh, domestic process. And we iron it all over, building up the temperature. By how much do we build up the temperature? Till it's just about uncomfortable to touch. And to make sure that the film is absolutely in firm contact and stuck to the brass plate, we use a roller. Uh, this is the sort of roller that you would get in an art shop uh, for lino printing, that sort of Very firm pressure. And now we have a brass plate covered with a layer of photosensitive material and at the moment it's still protected by a top layer of thin polythene film. Here is the film master fixed down on top of the plate. You can see that it's a transparent film uh, prepared by a professional a firm who make uh, printing plates. Designed on a computer, sent to them by email and picked up from there the following day. It's fixed emulsion side down. The reason for that is if you do it emulsion side up that will leave a little gap the thickness of the film and the ultraviolet light can hop through that gap and you'll get blurred edges on your, uh, on your finished result. So we're fixing it down with masking tape on the underside pressed against the edge and that's it fixed in place. This is the ultraviolet light box. Uh, it's just an ordinary box with a, a plate glass top and five ultraviolet tubes. Uh, it's called an actinic tube and you get them from any electrical supplier but they'll probably have to order them. There are five of them in there uh, but now we've got to lay the thing face down on there uh, and we have to make sure that there are no gaps between the film and the plate. Uh, if we just laid it on top of the glass there could easily be gaps so to counteract that there are various ways of doing it. This is my way. That white spongy plastic is the sort of stuff that goes on the underside of laminate flooring and it just forms a nice spongy layer that presses the artwork firmly against the metal. You have to hold it firmly down against the spongy plastic film and so we have this crude screw arrangement just to, to press the plate firmly down. That doesn't need to be any more than that. There are various other methods of doing this using a vacuum frame or a vacuum box uh, but this crude and simple method works very well. We now want to the light exposing the layer that we apply to the metal through the plastic film, through the clear plastic film. Uh, for this particular exposure we're using a digital timer uh, counting down from four minutes. So that's a four minute exposure. The ultraviolet light will pass through the clear parts and cause a chemical change to the film that we've stuck on there. It will harden it. It doesn't pass through the black parts so they remain soft and so we can then put that into a solvent, uh, sometimes referred to as a developer, we put it into a solvent and that will wash away the parts that we're going to etch.